Hi everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company and it is Triple Play Day. So I am here with Natalie and I'm here with Misty. And today we're gonna to talk about the fence rail. Yes. We all have some fun projects with the fence rail to show you and I think we can just go right into mine which is hanging right behind us. Awesome. So cute. What do you think, girls? It's I love so it, fun. I love it. So this is a pretty traditional fence rail. We did some fancy things outside here with a little fence rail and so we're calling mine the Fancy Fence Rail. Perfect. And so to make my quilt, I used Adele in Summer by Sandy Gervais for Riley Blake. And um, you're gonna need a roll of two and a half inch strips. You're gonna need some background, one and a half yards of background. And that includes this uh, little border right here. You're going to need an outer border fabric, which is, we use this flower right here. Isn't this the cutest? It's so fun. So cute. And we used a yard and a, a quarter of that. And that is a six inch border. My, this is my backing back here, you can see. Oh, that's so cute. That oh, lattice, yeah. lattice flower on the back. Yeah. And for the backing, you're gonna need four and a half yards, or if you decide to go with a, uh, a 108, you're gonna need two and a quarter. And then um, we need a little bit of binding, about three quarters of a yard. Oops. And I just chose this little tiny piece from the print. And it's, it's, so just, it's just gorgeous. And I can hardly wait to show you how to do this. All right, Natalie, if you'll hand me my step outs over sure. there. We will move these things I'll take over. This down, if you like. All right. So fence rail is really simple. You're just going to choose three strips, and you're going to sew them together. And sorry, Misty, I don't have a job for you because I already did it. <laughs> I already did it. It's done, huh? So let's go ahead and cut these. Now, with a fence rail, we're sewing three two and a half inch strips together, and you can see I've ironed this with the seams to the middle. Doesn't really matter which way you iron. It matters. It matters that you do iron. You know, but I just put mine to the middle. And then what we're going to do is we are going to measure how tall this is. Now, if you do a quarter inch seam on a three, two and a half inch strips, mm -hmm. it should come out to six and a half. And mine generally does, um, but I'm going to cut off this selvage and then we're going to look at what size it actually is because we want it to be six and a half. And so if yours isn't exactly six and a half, you're going to want to check your seams. So mine is super close to six and a half, which is great. So we want to cut squares from this. So we're going to go, um, it's six and a half tall. We're going to go six and a half wide. My ruler is five. I'm going to go over one inch, six and a half like this. And we're going to cut this whole thing into squares. And you'll know it's a square if you can actually fold it in half corner to corner and it meets up and it's right. So we're going to cut those into squares. Mm -hmm. And then um, we're just going to set them together, one going this way, one going this way. So let's look at the quilt back here. Very traditional. Yeah, so this is just traditional. Um, that's why we started with mine because these girls have done some fun things with their fence rails. But mine is very traditional. So we've got a block going sideways, up and down, sideways, up and down. And we've got one, two, three four, five, six of these. So what you're gonna do when you get ready to put these strip sets together is you're gonna choose 21 of these and sew them together in, in sets of three, and then you'll just mix them all up and you'll put them in rows. So we've got, again, we've got one, two, three, four, five, did I miss one? One, nope. two, three, four, five, six, by mm -hmm. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven down. So 42 blocks. And then I wanted to do uh, a border. So I kind of concentrated on the pinks in this border. I had several pinks left over. If you look at the roll, grab me that roll. Sure. If you look at the roll, there's quite a few pinks in here. And so I kind of just, I kind of just gravitated toward the pinks. And what I did with the pinks was I sewed two together and I have two right here. And when you sew two strips together, it measures four and a half, but we need it to be six and a half. So what I did was, again, because I want it, this is four and a half tall, I'm going to cut this four and a half wide. And so I'm coming out here, and this actually isn't quite straight. So you can line your ruler up along the edge, along your seam, along this top to make sure it's straight. And see, mine wings out here just a tiny. I'm going to trim that off. But then I'm going to come over and cut it at four and a half, because it's four and a half inches tall. We're going to cut it four and a half wide. And we're gonna do this to our whole strip. So off your two strip set, you should be able to get like 10 of these. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this on point so that it matches the six and a half inch block. So to do that, we're gonna cut a four and a half inch strip like this. 
and I'm just going to leave mine folded doubly and I'm going to cut these four at a time and I'm going to cut the blocks into four and a half inch squares. So just like this and then come over four and a half. My strip is already cut at four and a half the width of the fabric like this. And then what we're going to do is we are going to cut these one time. So I'm just going to corner to corner diagonally cut them. And then what I'll be able to do with this is I'm going to be able to put one on each side like this and this. And when you're putting them on the side, it's super easy because when you lay this one in, whoops, I have a doubler. When you lay this one in, just lay it on here and you'll see it sticks off quite a bit, but put Match your point to the seam and you'll know it's in the center. So Misty, if you could sew that. Absolutely. And then we'll do the same thing with the other one. Then on the other two, you can actually just like crease the middle, little finger press, and you'll know where the middle of it is. So add another one to the other side. Natalie, if you will yep. iron this back. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little ruler and I'm just going to kind of cut off those chunks that stick out. You don't have to do this, um, but it does make it a little bit cleaner and a little less bulk. So I'm lining my ruler up along the edge of my strip. That's my pattern. And I'm going to put it out here. And then these right here, we're going to fold this in half, finger press the edge right here. And then Misty will add, she'll just lay that seam into that seam. And it should hang over just about a quarter of an inch on either side. Okay. So if you'll sew that on. Now, because when I sew these, mine generally come out a little bit wonky. <laughs> I have a little six and a half inch ruler because that's the size of the block that we're going for. And, um, and I generally square it up. I just make sure somehow I try really hard to get it straight, but somehow it's always a little bit wonky. So we'll look and see how I did. And then we'll just square it up because we want it to match this exactly. Sometimes it's just easier to square too. Yeah. Because then you're not fighting. Yeah, so see how this, like it sticks out here a little bit, sticks out there. That almost always happens to me. So what I do is I just sit this six and a half ruler on here and I just square around this. I'm going to turn it. And I'm going to line it up in this corner because I know this corner is straight. And then trim this. Then when you go to add this border on, it's almost like adding a block to the end of the row. So it's going to fit up, fit up exactly with your fence rail block. And then because Perfect. at the end of your strip, so when you're cutting your three strip like this, you're going to get six out of these, but you're going to get this little end piece that's left over. And so I cut those into three inch chunks and, um, and I just sewed them together. To, I had enough to make that inner border. Yeah, so I just did this a three inch chunk. And then of course, I really wanted to use this big floral out here because it was so cute. And I wanted a little a break between them. Give your eye a rest. So I put a one and a half inch strip right here. I just cut out of my background fabric. I cut some one and a half inch strips, put that in there, added my six inch border on the outside. And it just it's came so together cute. so cute. It just made it a little and more fancy. And it's so much simpler than I thought it was yeah. going to be. I was worried about, you know, making this border fit because sometimes the measurements aren't the same when you add a pieced border. But I love how this is still yeah. six and a half. Yeah. So because this is the end of this. it stitches perfectly yeah. on. Yeah. It all just matches, matches, matches. That's so nice. great. So I love that. Whenever you're going to add a border, it's important that everything matches, you know, because these strips are cut off of these strips. Uh -huh. They're all going to be six and a half. So they That's all so just great. match up. I and they it. match up even in the corners, yep. you know. And yeah. just a you two just, and a half inch square. You're just adding another block on. Beautiful. And so it comes together so three inch? cute. Right. It would be three inch. It's a little three inch, yep. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So that's my fancy fence rail. So that's now so who's cute. next? Which one of you is me. next? All right. Awesome. We'll go with Misty next. All 
right, so this is my little quilt, and I designed a pillow to go with it as well. I love well. it. I called it Wildflower, and it's I just really think cute. it's really fun and happy, and you guys know I love the Drunkard's Path, so it was really fun to incorporate that with the fence rail. Um, and so it's really simple. So darling. Absolutely darling. Thank you. All right, so to make my quilt, you're going to need one package of 10-inch squares, and I used a new by Tamara Tate for Wyndham. You're also going to need a yard and a half of background or two yards if you're going to make both the quilt and the pillow. And then for my backing, you're going to need three yards, and I use this beautiful floral and just a little bit of binding, and then you'll need our small Drunkard's Path template. And if they make the pillow, they might need the pillow form. That's true. 18-inch, 18 18 right? 18-inch 18 pillow form, absolutely. <laughs> so let me show you how to make it. Move all this out of the way. Well, actually, I'll need that, but this can go. I'll do this. There we go. I'm over housekeeping. Perfect. There we go. All Somebody's right. got to do it. Somebody's got to do it. So to begin, you are going to take your 10-inch squares, and we are just going to cut these into inch-and-a-half strips. And so I used this little ruler, and I, I love how easy it is to see that inch-and-a-half line on there. And then we'll just cut all the way across. How many do you get? I can't remember. Let's, Let's count. See, two. <laughs> <laughs> It is so funny how we'll do these things, and then when we film them, it's been a, it's, it's been, been a moment, a minute. yeah. yeah. And so uh, we just don't always remember all, every little detail. That's right. Four. Looks like about six. I think six. Yeah. Five and six. And so once you get all these cut, then you're going to mix them up. And I just did a lot of chain piecing on this project because I sewed two together and then those two together into four to make my strip set. Because for my fence rails, I did four strips together. So that's what they'll look like after you've Perfect. sewn them together. Cute. And then we are going to subcut these. These should measure, sometimes they're a little wide, but they should measure four and a half. This one, it looks like I'm going to have to trim down a bit, but that's okay. Depending on your... Well, and With honestly, yeah, because if you do want, if you do one and it's a little wide, you know, oh. just cut them all that, whatever your width is, right. but mm -hmm. you just want to check that just like before. And so mine is like four and three quarters, but I'm just going to come over four and a half and then we can trim this little side to match and you should get two out of these. So I'm just going to turn it and give it a little, a little, a little haircut. haircut. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's nice because you're not actually matching up these seams with exactly. anything else because of the rotation. So, so you can trim them and square totally them to make forgiving. them whatever size they need to be. Yep, but you're look the way I wrote it, you're looking for four and a half. So I'm just going to do that, and you'll get two out of each of your little strip sets, just like so. so and how many squares did you use to do this? I picked out 30 squares, and that made the quilt and the pillow. And you just cut all those 30 squares into, into inch the and a half. inch and a half strips. Yep, Perfect. Exactly. And nice. So then I just got a pile of these because I wanted it to be nice and scrappy. And so then this is the block that you're going to make to make your petal. So some of them we're going to keep as whole fence rails, and some we're going to use our Drunkard's Path template. <laughs> so when I cut mine, I wanted all of them because I wanted this block to have the traditional spin of a sure. fence rail. I just made sure that they were running up and down and I lined this straight edge up against this side. That's for a super me. good tip. I would have forgotten Exactly. That. Mm -hmm. Every time. And so then when I cut them out, it just fits right on there and you just trim this little bit just like so. That's great. Yeah. Because then it, when you put all your pieces together, you get that curve that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And so awesome. then I had four and a half inch squares that I cut my background pieces out of. And so when you're using the template, you're just going to line that up just like so. And then we're going to cut that outside curve. And this is such Excellent. a gentle curve that you yep. can use. You know, the 45 rotary cutter is totally exactly. Fine. Yeah, and I've so never had to use a smaller one with our templates. Natalie, you can sew those together. Yay! <laughs> and I do have to say, when I was doing a lot of these, I saw a, a little trick where you can put a dab of glue at the start mm -hmm. and the end. Did you try it? Oh, it was amazing. Oh, cool. It worked so great. I didn't have to pin a thing, and it just kind of held, especially at the end when you're working with these small blocks, it held it right where you wanted it. So nice. It was so nice. All right, guys, I'm just creeping along. You're good. Don't mind me. Yeah, take your time. No. <laughs> With curves, you do just need to slow down and kind of enjoy the process. It yeah. just takes a little bit longer. It's just a little bit more attention. Yep. 
but it's not hard. No. And no, we, most of us have nice found and that slow. the um, pinning it just makes it a little more yeah. difficult for it kinda us. It kind of gets in my way. I agree, yeah. So she's got her pie piece on the bottom and the pan on the top. You can do this either way, though, you because can. it's I, just personal preference. I was going to say, I've heard arguments both ways. Yeah. Well, it's whatever you get yeah, used to. There you right? go. Absolutely. Oh, let me iron. Let there me iron. It's so satisfying. It is satisfying to straighten that out. It is so satisfying because it it's just like... Look how pretty. And it turns out so great. Yeah. There we go. Beautiful. And so I have the other one ready to go. And so they're going to go in opposite corners. And then your other fence rail pieces are just going to spin through here. And so we'll sew that together like a four patch. So cute. Just like that. It's darling, Missy. Absolutely Thank darling. Thank you. Really fun. I, yeah. I really enjoyed making this one. All right. On this side? Yep. Okay. Just wanted to make sure yeah. I didn't accidentally get that spun around. <laughs> Always worth it to check. And again, if you do have one piece that's just a little bit bigger, you can put that bigger piece on the, the bottom. bottom. Yep. And it will, uh, the feed dog will ease that in. Yep. And then are we opening and, just, and, and just sew them together? Stitching? Yep. Okay. Like a big four patch. All right. Exactly. Match your middle seam. Cool, cool. Yeah, it, they came together really quickly. I was surprised mm -hmm. how fast the blocks came together, even with the curves, because you're only doing two per. And it looks so much more tedious, I, I think, say, just because really it's got not. all the tiny strips. Yeah, it yeah. comes together really quickly. No, I love it. Thank you. It's so happy. It, it just has happy. that happy feel. Like, yeah. Some baby girl needs this quilt. I know it. I All the baby girls. It. We we know we'll a baby girl that, who needs this true. quilt. <laughs> you want to press that? I've got four blocks ready, and so you can see they just kind of spin and set together into that. Oh, that is so cute. Wildflower. And so I love it. That's what I did. I just did four big blocks for the quilt, and I decided to use my extra uh fence rail blocks as my cornerstone so these are four and a half inch strips between and all the way around and then i just set those with the fence rail and then on the little pillow i just put an inch and a half um outer border around it just to give it some space from the edge and that is it it's well let's talk about so this great i love pattern. it yes, the clothing a, pattern is so cute yes, it's called little nature and so it's got flowers and hummingbirds and ladybugs it's just really sweet it's and so whimsical. cute that is cute and the back and the back is this beautiful floral. Ooh, oh, that, that is so pretty. Yeah, That's such gorgeous. a nice back. It's this perfect. is a beautiful line of fabric. I really yeah. like and, it. Great line of and fabric. on the pillow, you just did like a simple envelope enclosure. I did, yeah. yep. Just it's overlapping those squares. Yep. That's and great. 18 inch form. Yep. yep, 18 inch pillow form. We have a little printable that walks you through how to do yeah. that. And the quilt ends up 44 inches square. That's so, so great. That's I love it. Awesome. awesome. So you're up next, Matt. All right, I had fun with mine. All right, so this is my quilt that I made. I wanted something fun to hang on the wall or maybe a door. You could do whatever you want with it. It's, it's just, just kind of like, love this. it's love it 24 inches wide by 32 inches long. So it's just a good, easy size. I had a layer cake to work with or 10 inch squares. And so really you have quite a bit left over. You could make a few of these, I think. Perfect and I think we think you yeah. should. Yeah, yes. Misty wants one. I want one. They're, they're on my to-do list. Oh, awesome. <laughs> it's not that long, really. That's right. Um, I incorporated some fun big stitching embroidery and some applique. And these are all like optional little additions. If you want to add them, you can. If not, no big deal. It's still yeah. going to be super cute. Yeah. And I love so. it. Here's our fence rail right here. Yep. I did some fence rail and some flying geese. I love Thank it. You. Well, show us how. Okay, so to make my quilt, you're going to need a package of 10-inch squares, and I used Brave by Anna Maria Horner for Free Spirit Fabrics. She does beautiful fabrics. Yeah, I love beautiful. her. Mm -hmm. I love her fabrics and her art. Um, the other thing you'll need is a half yard of background, and this is just this cream color here, so just a little bit to make some filler squares for sure. that negative space. And then um, a yard of backing, because it's so small, you can just get yeah. away with a yard. It's That's super awesome. easy. 
And look at this fabric. Oh, this is beautiful. gorgeous. Let's Isn't look at pretty? this really fast. That's so pretty. Isn't that just so gorgeous? gorgeous? And I did the I same the same on the binding as the backing, just yeah. because then it's it's easy and it and no fills in. Yeah, I love yeah. It. You'll only need about probably a half yard for your binding, mm -hmm. I think. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing you'll need if you're doing your little embellishments, you'll need some fusible, about two yards, and I use this Missouri Star Solite, and then uh, some embroidery floss. I use the pearl cotton uh, number eight, and we've got. <laughs> medium golden brown, very dark mauve, very dark turquoise, and avocado green. And I just pulled my color card and matched it to my fabric. So whatever fabrics you're using, you can just pick whatever colors you want. I just thought these four now, were really pretty. And I just want to say that when you use embroidery floss, you have to separate all the strands. Right, but when pearl cotton. When you use pearl cotton, it comes just two strands. Yeah, it's, it's a two and strand. so I like I love using the pearl cotton. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so I have I have just an embroidery needle, super basic, just a large eye needle. Mm -hmm. I didn't use a hoop for this because it, it's actually more comfortable for me to just kind of hold it and Everybody's stitch it through. Yeah. It's, yeah. I like a hoop. So. I started out with it, and then it was just so fidgety, and I couldn't get to the corners, and so yeah. I just sort of freehanded it. And you did all the embroidery work before you quilted it, right? I did. Okay. I did my embroidery work before the quilting because I just wanted it to sit on top. I thought it would be easier. Well, and then I love how when you then you do an all over quilting pattern over it, over the mm -hmm. embroidery, over the applique, and it just looks great. It keeps it's everything gorgeous. pretty yeah. secure too. Like and that. then I don't have to worry about hiding my knots. There oh, you go. That's there. true. So <laughs> nobody's gonna look inside there. That's yeah. right, that's right. All right, so show us how you did this. All right. So the first thing I did is I made a few of my fence rail blocks and I did that by taking my squares and cutting them into two and a half inch strips. Um, I have a few made. Do you think we need to go th go over that again? It's just sewing strips of sets of four Do they together. Come out the right size? No, I have to trim them to eight and a half. Okay, so you made them. They're cut at two and a half inches. Yep, each. two and a half by ten. Do you want to just? We sure. can just sew some let's together. Let's just do it. So here, let's do. These are these are good. These are great. They all just came off like that. That's well. Magical. Oh, look, I'm taking over. I'm just doing it. Just doing it. You're not going to think about I it. I love this one, yeah. Such fun fabric. Yes, so cute. All right, give me another. Right. And then these two can go together. So just in, I just did them, same as Misty, sets of two and then sets of four. Then we press them and trim them to eight and a half. And I made one, two, three, four, five, six of those. You can tell that I had cut up a whole bunch of strips. You don't, you don't use them all, and I just mix and matched to make them scrappy. But if you wanted to just cut, you know, six, six blocks or so into strips, you could just mix those up too and have lots of layer cakes left over for other things. So it doesn't matter. It's totally fine go. either way. There's that. All right. So again, you'll, you know, measure the height although it should be eight and a half. So we're just gonna cut the little bit off. And that is actually, I'm gonna trim this side nice and straight, very, very carefully. <laughs> and then we'll go and get the other side to eight and a half square. And I don't worry if I'm off, if it's within a quarter of an inch, I just don't worry about it. Well, because honestly, that's a Six, seven, you know kind eight. of a pressing thing too. Yep, eight and a half. So you're just losing a little bit there. So if my block ends up being just a little short, I don't worry too much about it as long as it's within a quarter of an inch. It'll you can hide it. In it will, you know, you can stretch it a little or ease it in. Yeah. So no big deal. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and a half, and cut that off. That little bit. And that goes in the crumb bin. Yep, right. and that goes in the crumb bin because it's just just enough. I mean, it would be it's really so cute. cute. So, so nice. these just Let's go together in opposite, um, opposites. Vertical, hor whoops, horizontal, vertical, horizontal. There Perfect. we go. Sideways, up and down, sideways, yes. <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Perfect. You will need to cut a couple of um, squares off your background. Let's just do okay. that real quick because that's super easy. You'll cut an eight inch strip, or sorry, eight and a half to be exact, because we need those to fill in that little upper corner. And I'm just going to keep this folded, not all the way folded, but 
halfway because it's easier too. to cut. Yeah. And I find um, four layers of fabric is pretty easy to cut through. Not a big deal to me at all. Yeah, probably if you can't cut through four layers, you need a new blade. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> or a cutting helper. There you Could go. just be one, two, three, you four, five, ruler? six, seven, eight and a half. You no, like that this should ruler. work. This is fine because I'm not. Um, I'm not measuring anything bigger than that. And then just cut off. I'm only opening it up because I only need one or two squares here. And I want to make sure I don't lose them in the middle. Just cutting off my selvage. Hey, Misty. And then going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and a half. It's always better to just count it out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Measure twice. Make cut sure once. you've got what you need. And then we're going to also need some two and a half inch squares for the corners of our flying geese. Now, I don't know if the pattern instructs you to cut it off of this strip or another strip or whatever, but, um, you know, we're you got to get some, you gotta get some two and a half inch squares from somewhere. And they, the, <laughs> the pattern team has got this all figured out. They do. They've got it all figured out. <laughs> so I'm just going to cut a couple of those. One more. Just just because. There we go. So we don't need that anymore. We've got these. Now from some of your two and a half inch strips that you've cut from your layer cake, you're gonna cut some four and a half by two and a half inch pieces to make your flying geese. And these are just as simple as you would think. We're cutting a four and a half and we're snowballing the corners. You can get two out of each strip I feel a snowball in my future. Absolutely. Yes, I think so too. <laughs> now these, you can draw the line or press the line. We'll just do a little finger press here. And you've got to just do one corner at a time because they overlap. Let's do that one. All right. Oh, this is so pretty. Yeah, I've got a bunch of them made up. So you'll, you can see that um, I just did two sets of four and that makes another eight and a half inch block. Trim that. All right, so we'll trim this off, press it back, and do the other side. There we go. All right. And one more. One more. You can use your diagonal seam tape on this, too, if you like. It is nice to have a line, though. Yeah. Sometimes Sometimes it can get not so nice if you have to draw like 700 yeah. but that's why I love this quilt that it, it like came together in a day I was like it's done Magic. this is a miracle it's so quick and then so you have time I'm to do all those fun things edge, so you might have to just lay the ruler on it well we'll uh, we'll check it out it we'll check it out and see I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal sometimes they like hoing out a little bit sometimes you know. it looks pretty good Does all it? right so should still be right two there. and a half by four and a half, and it's really pretty close. Okay, good. Yeah. Excellent. So what we'll do now is we're going to line these up in a, a row of four. We can oh, do they're all fours, aren't these they? ones and maybe this one. What do you think? Is that good? That's good. So I just stitched them together in sets of two. Okay. And then stitch those two together in a long row of four, and then put the two rows of four together. <laughs> so simple and fun. Sometimes that's what you need is just a yeah. quick, beautiful project. Yeah, and I think this, Open, make you know, sure they're going the right way. All of these little elements could just come together in different ways. You could make a pillow. You could, you know, do a, a whole big fence rail quilt with just a row of flying geese yes. on it. I mean, there's well, and the fact there's a lot of fun little stitching. Oh, just, I know it's such a fun. Detail. And they're super simple um, stitches. We will have a little little printout, I think, of like how to do. This is just a basic running stitch, a stem stitch, and a French knot, and the lazy daisy stitch. That's it. Four stitches, four colors. Super easy. Let me sew those okay. together. So we'll sew these together. Alrighty. You might want to line up those seams as you go along. That's probably the only thing. Even though they don't actually touch, so you won't notice if you're off a little bit. But, you know, it's fine. <laughs> there we All go. Right. 
press that open. I made three eight and a half inch square flying geese blocks. So that's it. Once you've got those done, your flying geese so are done. We have six fence, ra fence rails, three flying geese. Uh huh. And then I have some some open blank squares up here at the top, just three. Okay. okay. So these pieces are directly from the layer cake, and like you can see, this one is in the top corner because the rest of the flower was on the edge. So it kind of looks like. Let me see if I can show you like this one. So I thought, oh, that's a really pretty flower and it has this straight edge. So I put it right up against the top of the quilt. Okay. Very and cool. then I just looked through my other pieces and thought, oh, that's a pretty flower. And so I, I took the, where's the Heat fusible box. stuff? Right here. Yeah, the fusible stuff. <laughs> Very technical term. I love this little thing because you can just cut off the amount you need. Whoop. It's in there backwards, I think, it actually. Is in there backwards, yeah. That's all right. So then you just stick this on the back and press it down. Do we want to do that? Yeah, let's see. do it. Let's show it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and, and just trim this a little bit smaller. I think these are the things, you know, the details. Yeah, these are the parts go, that, maybe, how did you do that? Can I do that? You, you know? totally can, yeah. So I'm just going to put it right here in this corner. And Misty, just hit that with the iron a little, I mean, just a few seconds to make it stick. And then we can do the same do with this one. We can, if you want to. You don't really. Yeah, add a you can. Flower to the top of that. Sure. There's a seam like, you've laid the flowers like right over the seam. I did. So I put the whole quilt together before I did the applique. Okay. Yeah. So let's just do this too. Okay. Let's do this one as well. Right there. Yeah, and then. I, I don't know if you can tell, but you can see through the back. So if you wanted to cut it from the back side, you could, but I always just flip it over, cut from the front. I pick out the part that I want. And, once you and I didn't actually worry either about cutting these things off. I didn't go all the way around, but you could. It's up to you. So you I, just focus on the I, cut, I cut this big flower, okay. but I think if you wanted to include these pieces, you can. Yeah, sure. It's really personal preference because it's all just free form. It's your quilt. Do what you want. Yeah, absolutely. Put what you want on it. So should we cut around these flowers this time? Just see how it looks? Definitely. I think you just decide, you know, what do you want? It doesn't take very long. Well, so once you get the paper ironed on, cutting the fabric is so much easier as well. That's true. Yeah, it and keeps so, a nice clean edge. Yeah. I don't know why. It makes me feel like I'm in like craft class at school. <laughs> it's fun. It feels really creative. Takes me right back to elementary school. Yes. Only those scissors didn't work as well. These scissors are much better <laughs> than my true. school scissors. So yeah, make sure you have good scissors, nice good sharp ones. That's such a gorgeous line. Yeah, it's beautiful. And if you end up with a piece like this, just put it in the corner. Just leave it like that. No big deal. So then you're going to stick these down and decide where you like them. And I experimented quite a bit. I cut out several different elements of the, of the uh, layer cake and then overlapped them and layered them and spread them out. I put them together in three or four different ways before I found one that I really liked. And then you take the backing off and press them down. But you, know, you that, have the that whole quilt That seems really assembled. easy, but yes, the whole yeah. quilt will be assembled by this time. Okay, almost there. I like these little flowers. Mm -hmm. They're just so bright and happy. Yeah. I wonder if she spends a lot of time. So then you like can in... just overlap them this way. This one could go like under here. This could just stick out over there. Oh, that's so fun. You know, so you can do any variety of how you want your flowers to look. And that's if there's so parts cool. that are flat or funky, you can put them into the edges. Like this piece could just go straight here and you could cut that off. You know, all kinds of all kinds of fun ideas for using this fabric as art. I just think it's so pretty. I love it. So do so. you want to show us a little running stitch sure. on this? Um, yeah. This um, flying geese. Absolutely. 
So is your so thread, you changed with, thread. I did, I used the, the pinkish mauve here and the turquoise and the yellow and the green. And so I did, I did repeat that on every row, red, blue, yellow, green, red, blue, yellow, green, same. And then up here, these are just, I kind of did these little things based on what's on the, oh, on the, material. On the material. So she has these like, these little floral lines with all the little dots on them. And then these things that come out, they're, um, they're like little straight lines with French knot or dots at the end. Mm -hmm. And so I thought a little straight line with a French knot would be perfect. Yeah. So I tried to kind of imitate that in this design work. And this has all these little dots on it. And I think they look like little oh, so buds cute. or so something like that. And what a fun, relaxing thing to do. You know, it's just super to relaxing. And do a little bit of embroidery on your project. Mm -hmm. And yet it throws it way over the top. Yeah. yeah. So Beautiful I just do detail. a simple knot that I... I wrap it around my finger and pull mm -hmm. it through and then just start at the base. I don't know if you can, you hide, you know, put your knot in the back and pull it through the front and then it's just a, oops, it's just kind of an in and out. Yeah. Running stitch is just in and out. There's no mm -hmm. back going backwards on it. Yeah. Oop. There we go. Our grandma was an embroiderer, and so we all love embroidery. Yeah, and I I just tried to keep it basically the same distance away from the seam, but you just kind of go through. Although no one has ever measured. No one measures. <laughs> they just look at it and go, oh my gosh, that's so cute. Right? Yep. And so you want your, you want your stitches to kind of be spaced. Evenly. An even distance apart. Yeah. And then when I get up to this point, oops, all I did was go under. Um, oh, move. under the next one. Under, and out. yeah, under the point and come out on the other side. Mm -hmm. So I'll just go down in here and then across and come back out over there. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. And it's looking a little wonky, but. I think it's because I'm trying to do it on camera. <laughs> and you're probably going a little quicker than you I would. am, yeah. So this is a part that you can just sit and enjoy. Yep. I love it. I love it, too. Yeah. Oh, that's so fun. There we go. that I got a little crooked there but I kind of like the the, the human organicness of it. Yeah. of it and if you're more comfortable using a hoop you can absolutely do that all right perfect I find big stitching to be one of my favorite things to do. This running stitch. It's nice and slow. It should probably be a walking stitch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not a right. Run. That's true. Crawling stitch. <laughs> And then I just put a knot in the back and switch colors. Go on to the next little mountain. So for my knot, I kind of just flip it over and make a little loop in the um, in the extra fabric on the back. Go go through that a couple times. And that's that's all I do because it's going to be on the inside of the quilt and it's going to be um, buried and machine yeah, stitched down. It over the top. So that is it. Beautiful. Super easy, fun, relaxing. Don't and be too perfect about it. Yeah, just enjoy it. <laughs> Keep and it your, easy. Your, uh, yeah. Quilting pattern that you used. Oh, is... quilting pattern is time warp. I mm -hmm. just love it. It's one of those. It's got great movement and covers the whole quilt really well. Yes, it's great. So, it's beautiful. 
And yeah. I love that you just did it right over the embroidery. I, think I that's, did. You know, yes. I've done that before. And people are always really worried when they embroider on things, should we machine quilt over them? And it's like, yes, yeah, definitely. You totally can. Yes. And I almost forgot to tell you, um, I did top stitch the applique with a uh, blanket stitch, machine blanket stitch with mm -hmm. the sewing machine and did that even before I did my um, embroidery and before I did my machine quilting. It's perfect. It's just beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. It's just beautiful. So I hope Great that job, that Matt. was, I hope that that's fun and that you enjoy it and be creative, get inspired, do all kinds of fun things. Well, hey girls, I think we hit this one right out of the park. Yep. Over the fence, if you will. Oh, yes. oh perfect. The fence I love it. So we hope you enjoyed our triple play this week on the Fence Rail Block from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. Hi everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company and I am here with Natalie and with Misty and we hope you enjoyed watching our latest triple play. You can find us together on the third Friday of each month as we hit another tutorial out of the park. If you aren't already part of the Missouri Star Quilt Company family, be sure to subscribe and click that bell to be notified each time we release a new video. See you next time. time.